Get £300 off your next used car. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube and Facebook channel. Uh, delighted to have your company. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff, as ever, is alongside me. Uh, and Barry Ferguson tonight with us. Of course, Barry, uh, more often than not, always features in what we're going to talk about in the news. Try to get one of those photographs where you're smiling or maybe pointing or doing this, you know, just to make you look like a, you know, one of those real managers. We're going to talk about that uh, vacant Hamilton Aki's job uh, just shortly. Uh, welcome to the programme. Of course, the red hot topic is, of course, uh, Neil Lennon. Uh, Hibbs uh, released a statement earlier this evening with regards to Neil Lennon and Gary Parker. The management team of Neil Lennon and Gary Parker left the club by mutual consent. They've not been dismissed and have not resigned. The suspension put in place to allow an internal review was lifted by the club as part of this agreement. Despite widespread speculation, the club confirms that neither Neil nor Gary has been guilty of any misconduct or wrongdoing and no disciplinary process has been commenced. However, Neil, Gary and the club now consider that it would be in the best interest of all parties to part amicably. The club would like to place on notice uh, a thanks to Neil and Gary for their hard work and of course uh, they've highlighted some of the things that they've achieved, restored to the top flight, reached the top four with a record points total, qualifying for Europe uh, and record season and ticket sales since 1958. Uh, Neil and Gary would like to thank the club for having faith in them when they were appointed in 2016 and for the support over the two and a half years. And the quote from the chairman is, we're grateful to Neil and Gary for all their efforts and in particular for leading the club back to the top flight of Scottish football. We wish them the best. Neil Lennon has said, I'd like to thank the board, the coaching staff, the players and all the fans for making the last two and a half years so enjoyable. It's been my privilege to serve the club and I wish it every success in the future. OK, that's what I call personally, Ruffy, towing the party line. This is my personal opinion on it. Quite simply, at the end of the day, some players can't take criticism. Uh, Neil Lennon had ambitions for Hibs and I don't think Hibs were able to meet them. And somewhere along the line, there's been undoubtedly a clash mm -hmm. between Neil Lennon and Leanne Dempster. And in the end, Neil Lennon is the fall guy. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of supporters will be right behind Neil. Uh, I think they saw what he's done at the club since he went there, the success that he's had, uh, particularly last year, challenging Rangers and Celtic on numerous occasions. It's been great for the supporters, <coughs> and the attendance has been there for everybody to see. You know, the, the, the club has been just uh, reinvigorated with everything that he's brought. Yeah, there's been some downsides as well, but on the footballing side, I think you have to, you know, congratulate him on what he's done. Uh, for me, the statement is he's not guilty of any wrongdoing and misbehaviour, yet we're going to suspend him. You know, it just, just doesn't sound, doesn't sit right. Yeah, and you won't get, uh, over the next couple of days, I do not believe um, Neil Lennon sitting down with anyone because, quite simply, the two parties have sat down and thought to themselves, well, if we're not in the wrong, then sh surely at the end of the day, you know, there could be a lengthy legal case here. They've turned around and said to each other, right, OK, we're going to part ways. You can have your money. Keep shut. There's your, your conference clause, uh, confidentiality clause. End of story. Yep. First and foremost, what I will say is, Hibs, I've got ready a top manager for me. I think the success the guy's brought the last two and a half years has been great this season. OK, he's not been as good as previous. But I don't think he's been backed in the transfer market. You could see his frustrations after games and interviews that he was wanting to bring certain players in because, as we've mentioned plenty of times before, he lost a lot of quality in the summer and he's not replaced them. And that's what's frustrated Neil Lennon. And another thing is, the guy's a passionate, demanding manager. He was like that as a player. And nowadays, if you're like that towards players in the dressing room, they can't handle it, as simple as that. So um, it's disappointing. Um, from my side because I know what he's like and again I think the Hibs supporters will be disappointed because they've lost a top manager.
for me, I think a lot of Hibs fans will look and question the the ambition of the club. I think, though, again, it turns the focus back on the chief executive and the chairman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we'll we look at all managers. All managers want the best players in available. We saw Brendan uh, Rodgers not happy with a couple of signings he didn't get. And I think Neil maybe comes into that category as well. I think he'd be re extremely disappointed at not getting Scott Allen in right away. Uh, I'm sure that maybe he's wanting the club to push the boat out a wee bit in that one. And certainly Effie Andrews leaving when he left, you know, who was a big, big player for the club. So there'll be probably a lot of things like that have annoyed him, you know, to with the players that he's lost and, and not been able to bring the, the same quality into the club and where they're sitting in the league, I'm sure he'd be wanting up their top three. Yeah, I mean, Barry, I, I have to say, I know sometimes we are guilty of making, you know, broad generalisations on, uh, you know, players. Not all of them are petulant, you know, to the point where, um, you know, that they can't take criticism. There are some who are big enough and man enough, yep. but there are a number of them now. There's a change. There's a sea of change. You know, if they're on big money, then suddenly they can become bigger than the club because of their sell-on value. But there are some people, you know, and I can't quantify it, but I don't think everybody's the same. I think there are some players who just throw the dummy out of the pram, can't take criticism, go in a huff. Yeah, for me, it's what I get brought up. Uh, if you didn't do well in a game, you get criticised, you get told it's not good enough, so you need to go and work even harder. I think that's what's happened. Um, obviously, they've been in a difficult run. Lenny's just went in the dressing room and, and had what I would think would be a normal <coughs> meeting, uh, calling a few players out, saying it's not good enough. He's wanted a reaction, but these players can't handle that. As simple as that. I'll tell you one thing, Ruffy, and this is the other problem that comes off the back of this. Quite simply, you know, he might not be able to say exactly what happened, but managers and players talk to each other, mm -hmm. and that will gather pace. And I think Hibs will face, they'll get a manager eventually, mm -hmm. but I think Hibs will face close scrutiny on two counts. One, your ambition, which clearly they can't match Neil Lennon, so you're talking about an inferior manager, as Barry mentioned, coming in. Uh, so that's the first thing. And then secondary to that, what stance are you going to take if players are to be criticised at that club now? Yeah, and I, and I think that's a good thing for Neil, is that it's, there's not been any bad mouth and with the agreement that they've had. And if we're all led to the assumption that the reason this all happened was because he was showing a bit of ambition in the dressing room and getting play, trying to get the best out of players, I don't think any other clubs would hold that against them. I think every club would want to see their players playing to the best of their ability. And uh, Although he was having a go at the players, he, he wasn't actually leaving them out. He was actually playing them and saying, look, I've given you a slaughter here. Go out and prove me wrong. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's not as if he's been banishing players to the ground and playing with the reserves. He's actually been saying to them, look, then on you go. Out you go and show me what you can do. What, yeah. What's happening in football now that you can't criticise in, in between four walls? You can't call a few players out saying it's no good enough. I want better. And then, as you mentioned, the perfect word to spit the dummy out. What's going on with football nowadays? The other thing as well, Barry, which I think another manager, you know, certain managers will just say, Oof, I'm not going near Easter Road. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Yeah. But secondary to that, I think a lot of people will look and say, well, you know, probably at the end of it, Neil Lennon was happy to leave because quite simply, here is a club that loses a quality midfield and doesn't show the ambition to try in some way to replace it and quickly because... I thought Hibs would be top four again this season, yep. but they, they haven't. What they've done is they've gone backwards mm -hmm. and they're going further backwards. Ambrose is out the door. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would have taken a huge amount to get him in the door. Um, he was happy there. Y you've lost the three quality midfielders and suddenly mm -hmm. you're starting to replace them with inferior players uh, or I, you're not even replacing them. I would imagine three, four months before leading up to the summer when he was no, he was going to lose uh, Dylan McGee McGinn. Scott Allen obviously going back to Celtic. I'm sure Le uh, Neil Lennon would have had players the length of his arms saying, right, this is who I want to come in. And obviously, Hibs have no, they've not come up with the, the money or the finances to go and get these players. I mean, they get £3 million for John McGinnon. I'm sure Neil Lennon would have loved that money to go and spend or get two or three players in his, in his place. I know he brought Marlon in, who I think is a very, very good player. But as you say, you lose a whole midfield, which is your engine room of your team. You need to replace that. And obviously he's not been backed, and that's what's... You can see it in his interviews after games, the frustration in him. Because um, he, know, he knows he's got a, 
a hardcore, a decent group of players there, but he needs a bit more quality. And that's what I think the frustrations came that they never backed him in the transfer market. The next Hibs manager won't have, for me, Ruffy, the same edge to him because Neil, you know, instead of confrontation taking a step back, Neil takes a step forward. Mm -hmm. We all know his character and his personality. He's fiery, he wants to win. He's had a whole career based on hard-hitting managers with a will to win and he's backed it up with his performances in the middle of the park and he's also backed it up with his record at Celtic as well. So clearly it tells me Hibs can't match that ambition. But who do they go for now? I mean, I, I almost fell off the chair laughing when they talked about Gordon Strachan. Gordon Strachan's worse than Neil Lennon. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't tolerate two minutes of anybody coming in and even coming <coughs> into the dressing room. So there's no chance. I mean, Gordon Strachan said today he would do them the honour of, of talking to the Hibs board. But he's got so many outside interests now. I don't think he's ready to return to football and he certainly wouldn't touch Hibs. No, it's a surprised one. You know, if it was to happen, it would be a surprise to everybody. And Gordon Strachan's the only person who can uh, answer that one if he misses the day to day. Uh, role of football, or but is he happy with a lifestyle? No, and I'm, no saying, chance, no, I'm just saying he's the only one who can answer that as an individual. But what I'm saying is, what Hibs have lost, the, the supporters have lost a manager who is a fan, yeah. you know, and that's what they've lost. You don't get many managers who the fans can really buy into, you know. And the reason it's that Neil Lennon got the Celtic job was because of the Celtic fans, because they wanted him. You know, they, they knew what they were getting. So the next guy who comes in will will have to. You know, worked extremely hard to win over these fans. He's going to be a hard man to replace, I'll be honest with you. I don't mind it. Look, look he gets in a bit of trouble at the sidelines, but I don't mind that. A bit of passion and getting involved with the fans. I, I like to see managers like that. If they score a goal, they're up and down the touchline celebrating. I love all that. That's, that's part and parcel of football. That's why we love it. A bit of passion is, is great in the game. and I think, I think Hibs will miss him. Yep, I don't think, I, I don't think the, the ambition's there at that club at the moment. I'm surprised, I mean, when they come up for the, the championship, I thought they were fantastic last year. When they finished in the top four, do you think, right, do you know what, go on, push on to maybe chat, chat. I'm no, I'm not saying they're going to win the league, but at least mount a decent challenge. And it never materialised, as simple as that. You never get the finances uh, to go out and get these players. OK, who takes the job then, uh, <coughs> Ruffy? I mean, Alan Stubbs says he's interested. You know, Alan Stubbs will forever be in Hibs folklore because of the Scottish Cup win, but do Hibs fans accept a man who decided to bowl out the door for Rotherham? Yeah, I mean, that is a big problem that Alan's got. You know, it would have to be a lot of convincing to the supporters uh, for him to come back in there. I'm sure over the next two or three days, we'll see lots of names getting thrown in there. Uh, some might be interesting, some might not. Uh, but again, I think they'll have to act very, very quickly because obviously they need to get back into that top six. And of course, that manager has to accept a policy and a transfer policy that quite a number of people have to accept now where mm -hmm. people are actually going out and buying or bringing in the players for you. Yeah, well, look, don't get us wrong. It is a fantastic club, great stadium, great training ground. Um, I don't know, what's their crowds? 14,000, 15,000? 15, 16, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is a great club to be at, but if they're going to at least mount a challenge, as I say, in the league and get far in the Cups, you do need money. And Hibs have got money, there's no doubt, because they, they do sell players, they look after their finances, uh, it's whether they want to go and spend it. OK, if you're a Hibs fan, uh, give us your view on it, uh, PLZ Soccer, at PLZ Soccer on Twitter. Uh, you can go to our Facebook, give us your thoughts on that, and on YouTube, undoubtedly, as well. Do the club have any ambition to try and reach the heady heights of what Neil Lennon achieved? Uh, season ticket sales through the roof, you'll obviously be passionate about it in your own opinion. Uh, so from there, uh, other news. <coughs> Scott Brown looks as if he's on the verge of signing that two-year deal to stay at yeah. Celtic, Ruffy. Did you see that one coming? Uh, again, that's all up to the individual. It's all up to, you know, what uh, personally he wants out for the remaining of his career. I'm sure that the meetings with Celtic would have meant to continue to play whenever he wanted. There'll be a coaching job for him as well. So that's maybe what swayed the whole thing. Yep, it's an interesting one, of course. Uh, the transfer window will keep you right up to date on the website, www.plzsoccer.com, on all the latest transfers. And if you get a chance, download the app and 
every bit of news from north and south of the border and across the globe is at your fingertips. So, and the other thing, never mind managers coming and going at one place, we've got a Kelty Hearts boss here um, <laughs> in the running for the Hamilton Ackies job. Now, the bookies, we had a poll this morning uh, on uh, PLZ Soccer Twitter. And uh, here's the result. Uh, who is your pick to replace Martin Canning in the Hamilton hot seat? And I, and I think it's two former, uh, you know, is it Mill United yep, uh, players boys, are yep. in there. Paul Hartley at 40%, Barry Ferguson 34 Gordon Young's been mentioned in this as well. He was a former Motherwell uh, backroom coach. And there's a few others in there um, that uh, people have been suggesting on the Twitter. So the big question... Uh, as we see these odds here, just have a look at this, uh, Barry. Uh, Brian Rice at one to two, Paul Hartley eight to one, Neil Lennon ten to one. Um, um, I, I think I might beat Ruffy at tennis before that happens. Uh, John Hughes <laughs> twelve to one, and Barry Ferguson sixteen to one. So the big question, as I look you straight in the eye, if Hamilton were to come calling for you, would you take that job? They've no came calling. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the honest um, answer. Um, I think people just look at it because I'm a Hamilton boy. I go down um, and watch some of the games because it is my, my local team. And when I was younger, I've, I've said this plenty of times, when I couldn't get to Rangers games, I would always go down to, to Douglas, Pla uh, Douglas Park sorry, and, and watch hackies. And I still go there um, whenever I can. So I think that's what people are, are probably looking into. Um, yeah. look, are you interested in the job? No, look... I, I'm back in football is the main thing I say is that I just wanted to get out coaching. I've been doing that for the last couple of months. Things are going f fine at uh, where I'm at just now. I'm just happy to be on the training ground, Peter, again. Yeah, but ultimately, the long the long game for you is to get back at the top flight. Yeah, of course, that's what you want to do. You, I know Ruffy's laughing here. I'm <laughs> not, I'm not answering, but no, of course you want to manage or coach at the highest level. Uh, I was out the game for 16 months. I'm just in it a couple of months. I'm enjoying it. But listen... If a club comes calling, you've got to go and speak to them, as simple as that. OK, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not denying it, <clears throat> it's not ruling it out, it's just the way we read into things. Uh, um, but nevertheless, sooner or later, someone will come calling for your man here and we'll lose him, Ruffy. Yeah, well, we would like to think that uh, clubs like Hamilton will pr promote, promote young managers, you know, somebody who have got views in the game that have uh, new, new views, somebody that can adapt to... You know the club; they know all about the club, and uh, and obviously Barry comes into that category because we want to see quality players been who have been their whole life, and we we'll see what they can do. We'd like to see them turning it into what they can do at a club. Yeah, and you're an, if anybody did hire you, Barry, you're an unusual, not maybe even an old school manager. You like to pick the team, you like to pick your own players, and you also like to shout at them. Oh, I'm demanding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll get a job, will I? <laughs> uh, you're not allowed to do that now. No, listen, I've always been like that. I, I get brought up like that at, at Rangers as a young kid. I was, uh, there was demands put on me every single day. And that, that's the way I, I felt that benefited me. And I think, listen, if you put demands on people, um, you let them know what you want. And if they can't do it, well, simple as that, they, they'll not be there. OK, that's what you're getting if you uh, pick up the phone for Barry Ferguson. Uh, OK, let's switch our attention just briefly towards the end of the programme, which has been dominated by the Neil Lennon situation. Um, Aberdeen eased into uh, the next round of the Scottish Cup, the fifth round, after uh, dispatching four past ten house. Uh, Sam Cosgrove scoring again 10 goals in 10 games. He's on some run. Um, but uh, I'll tell you right now, they should actually just hand over the uh, Championship Player of the Year to Stephen Dobby. 37 goals, his Fifth hat trick, three nothing for Queen of the South last night, Ruffy. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, we played Queen of the South at the weekend. I couldn't see that result coming at all. Uh, but when you've got Dobie in your team and uh, he's got an eye for goal, and it's an incredible amount of goals. You know, not just the Championship Player of the Year. I think he's in the running for everything. You know, even at the top level, because yep. he's doing. Th I know it's a different league he's in, but certainly you can't hold against him the goals that he scored. And if he was to get away above 40, 50. He has to be in the running. Yeah, yeah it's a good call, Ruffy. Uh, I can't uh, knock you for that one. Um, as far as the cup match tonight, Cowden Beath against Rangers, uh, Stephen Gerrard says he'll show them every respect. I still want the same standards, the same same attitude and, and, and mentality. I think that's where you you come unstuck in these ties if you get complacent and think you can just turn up at places like Cowden Beath and expect to win. Um, that's when you, you face difficulties. Uh, we know we're going to get the best Cowden Beef. You know, when the draw was made, I'm sure there was a lot of smiles and excitement around uh, their dressing room and 
this is a fixture they've been looking forward to. So we're going to expect the best card and beat, and we need to respect that. Let's not be disrespectful to them, but I think Rangers should be in the next round by tomorrow morning. Yep, they should be. Um, but he's spot on there. You've got to earn the right to win a game of football. When you go to places like uh, Central Park, Cowdenbeath, um, a lot of these guys have not played in a stadium or a pitch like that. So they need to go be professional because this, this is a game of life for Cowdenbeath. So as long as they go and they showed what they showed on Sunday against um, Livy, I think Rangers will go through into the next round. Celtic against St Johnson in the league. Brendan Rodgers knows what Tommy Wright's team has to offer. We know all about Tommy's team. You know They're always provided a difficult test. Of course, the last time we played, we played very, very well. And it was probably the catalyst, really, for both teams. You know, For them, they went on a great run. Uh, and actually, in what, six away games before the... Uh, before the weekend, they hadn't conceded, you know. So, uh, so they conceded the first goals at the weekend uh, in the game against Hearts. So, uh, so we know that they'll be looking to get back on track again on, on Wednesday, and uh, we'll make it really, really tough for us. Chance for Celtic to go six points clear, Ruffy. Yeah, it certainly is. I, I think the last time St Johnson went to Park yeah, they got a hammer, you know, and then they turned the corner and went on that yeah. run of clean. Sheets, I think that uh, tonight they were a wee bit wiser. I think they'll try and make it as difficult <coughs> as possible, but I think in the end, Celtic will win. OK, it's been a difficult show um, because obviously Ruffy and myself are at loggerheads with each other. None of us have been in any way suspended after our game of tennis last night. I haven't actually uh, been suspended. I've agreed to some kind of clause between me and Ruffy, which allows me not to tell the full story of why I wanted to plant my tennis racket in the middle of his head after he was <laughs> cheating. I don't want to go into to too much at it at the moment because obviously uh, we've signed a confidentiality clause, Barry. <laughs> There's no point in bringing it out in the open. <laughs> uh, if you want to take us out for a pint, we might tell you exactly what happened. Uh, from Alan Ruff, from Barry Ferguson, myself, Peter Martin. Don't forget, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and get us Monday to Friday at 6 o'clock and on Facebook as well. Thanks for listening and uh, we'll find out maybe tomorrow who's in the running for the Hibs job. Get £300 off your next used car. Visit arnoldclark.com.